they have not allowed an earned run so far. There you have it, the United States team ready to come out here for the top half of the first inning at Dodger Stadium. What a picture, perfect early evening for baseball activity. It's the United States going up against Korea. They've averaged just about 48,000 per game, and this is just about a sellout. Taking a look at the United States lineup, Mark McGuire out of the University of Southern California, the nation's leader with 32 home runs during this past season. Pretty good defensive player at first, too. Back at Dodger Stadium, bottom half of inning number two, we are scoreless. Mark McGuire, who's played here at Dodger Stadium, he's the first baseman for the University of Southern California. They play the Dodgers in an exhibition game every year. In fact, this year, the Trojans won it by a final score of four to nothing. The O'Malley's and Rod Dato have a long association. It goes back many years here in Southern California. McGuire goes reaching for this one. Inho Bake will have to hurry. He got him. Nice play, Corey. And for a guy who's 6'5", 220 pounds, McGuire can motor. Made that a very close play at first base. Bake had to hustle that throw. It wasn't a very strong throw. Really a little bit high. He didn't have a lot on it. 6-3 to three if you're scoring at home. Throws a little high, but he beats him. George and Clark is retired, which has not been an easy thing to do in this baseball tournament coming in at 570 <laughs> into the game the hottest hitter on this USA club Mark McGuire the first baseman next up they got him reaching to ground out the first time up there they are again and it's a little tap the third baseman cuts it off and they tag him nice play by the first baseman Hyung Suk Kim throw pulled off the bag a little bit by Young Cook Kim. Now the he, only way you can make this play, as you know, George, is to tag the guy because the foot is off the base. He does exactly what he's got to do. McGuire tries to evade the tag, can't do so, and two are down here in the fifth inning of play. And then again, you've got the number one home run hitter in college baseball up. Dato is not one to rule out anything, so you wouldn't be surprised to see them try to sacrifice here and play for one or two more runs. He's squaring and bunts it foul. So, at least for that pitch, McGuire is thinking sacrifice. One more factor that may enter into Dato's thinking is the fact that McGuire has been struggling. 0 for 2 in this ball game. His average is a bit over 200 coming into the tournament. Although he's the kind of hitter who can explode at any time. Perhaps it might be best to bunt him along to second and third and let Snyder take care of it. He's, he's hitting 380. He's grounded out twice and both times weakly reaching for the pitch, trying to pull an outside pitch. We'll see if it's on again. It is, and it gets the corner. Same place. If there's one hitter that O oh, has been able to hit the corners on consistently, it's McGuire. He's been going low and outside all evening long. And for the Koreans, no John Park is warming up in the bullpen. We could see him called upon here shortly. 0-2 oh, to McGuire. A little bit high. 1-2 and two is the count. To Mark McGuire, who had 32 home runs this past year. Broke the USC record for home runs in a single season. Of 17, that's when he got 19 last year. Way up there. And we're even at two and two. And you look at McGuire, and we've talked about some athletes of the past, but Dave Kingman is another athlete that went to USC as a pitcher and as a pretty good hitter. So did McGuire. Dato moved Kingman to the outfield, and he's moved McGuire to first base, realizing the future is with the bat for these two men. And after going down 0-2, we're at a full count with two on. And nobody out here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The United States with a 3-2 lead. And chung Ok Kim has not moved from that position all game long, has he? A little nervous. His pitcher, myung Lok Oh, with the full count. Pressure, pitch, but Gwynn gets to third. Pressure, pitch, as he gets McGuire, but the runners will advance. As again, Dato has something working. 
just could not get the bat on the ball. So even though McGuire strikes out, they do what they wanted to do, get the runners to second and third. And Park will go up against McGuire. Runner in scoring position, United States leading it by a score of five to two. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. George, you talk about a guy who is due, McGuire. Hit 32 home runs, led the nation this past fall, an 878 slugging percentage right now in this tournament. Three of 17, a batting average of 176. A little bit high. Tried to pull two outside pitches for ground balls and then struck out his other time. He's 0 for 3. Getting the first look at somebody from the other side after facing the right-hander. Had a good cut on it, but again went fishing for the low and inside pitch. Got a classic-looking swing, though, doesn't he? He's a powerful young man. Clark leads off second base. United States would love to have another run to pad it a bit here with a three-run lead, 5-2. Looks <clears throat> good, and it is good. So McGuire finds himself in the two-strike zone once again and becoming a defensive hitter. Just outside, and we're even at 2-2. There's Odeby. It looks like he's okay. Talking to Coach Rod Dato in his civilian clothes. Obviously just a precaution when he left the game. McGuire pops this one to the right side. The right fielder, Lee, will make the catch. Ground ball, Corey has it. Snyder's throw in time to McGuire. And the United States has advanced to the championship game. Let's enjoy it with him. George, I like the way Corey Snyder fielded that baseball, threw the baseball up in the air and said, I got it. Deposite su confianza en Bancrédito, el banco de las mejores recompensas. Bancrédito, filial del Grupo Financiero Nacional. El bateador de turno lo es Mac McGuire. McGuire batea para 167, una formación de cerveza presidente. El verdadero sabor en el círculo de espera. Pepsi Col está Silvestre Campuzano. Y en el calor de cada instante, ese momento refrescante, Pepsi. Bueno, el promedio del bate de McGuire no está de acuerdo con la estructura física que él está mostrando. ¿Mm? porque ese, ese es un jugador bastante corpulento y bastante alto una bola para Mac McGuire hombre en primera, J.R. González buena velocidad a pesar de su corpulencia se quejaba en una entrevista antes del partido que tiene problemas con el manager Lipman bola, la tercera 3 y 2 y con el próximo lanzamiento se va al corredor de primera y si no le hubiese tirado a, por lo menos a uno de los lanzamientos se estuviese en primera porque estaba fuera de la zona de strike de piconazo bola 4, pase por bola para Maguire ahí va para primera con el águila en su motor aceite de motor US, calidad controlada distribuidores exclusivos Hernández Comercial Compañía por Acciones en Santiago bien esta es la primera transferencia que otorga el lanzador derecho de las águilas ciudadanas José Nú Mark Maguire 2-2 pitch, strike free call has walked out the outside corner. Better learn to follow that off or hit it, kid, or you'll be back in uh, Tacoma. Look how slim he is here. Still got some guns, <laughs> but a lot slimmer. 440 feet, 1986, former teammate Walt Terrell, Chester Lemon trying to make the catch. He looks like a... McGuire. And a fly ball to deep center field. Chet Lemon with a long... A 289 batting average, an all-star appearance, and the American League Rookie of the Year award. Well, the next White Sox game on Sports Vision comes your way tomorrow night at 7 o'clock.
when the Sox play game number two against these Oakland A's. Starting pitchers will be Pete Filson, making his first appearance for the White Sox, and Jose Rijo was 1-6 and lost 10 for the Oakland A's. Pete Filson, the American Association Pitcher of the Year, while pitching down to Buffalo, won 14 and lost 3 for the Buffalo Club. So we'll see him tomorrow night, formerly up in the Major Leagues with the Minnesota Twins. Now here is Mark McGuire hitting for Bruce Bochte. McGuire hitting 167, two home runs, four RBIs as he takes a ball 1-0. Oh, way back down the line. Fair, it's gone. This ball is long gone. Home run for McGuire, and it's a four to one ball game. Well, that's his third home run. And that is the first earned run given up all year long as a White Sox pitcher by left hander Ray Searage. So, Mark. McGuire getting into one and driving it to the upper deck in left field. Don, that is the first earned run off Searage as a Sox pitcher. Jim Pregosi out there to talk to Searage and McGuire. His third home run, his fifth run batted in in the major leagues. And that is the correct spelling, M-C-G-W-I-R-E. Rather unorthodox spelling for McGuire. It's usually M-C-G-U-I-R-E. But Boy. there he is. And there's Bobby Thigpen coming on. I'll tell you, there was nothing odd about that swing he took. No, sir. Brother, that ball got out of here in a hurry. So Ray Searidge will leave. Bobby Thigpen will come on. It's a four to one Sox lead. And Searidge as he leaves Thigpen taking over. We have a break in the action and we'll be right back with the Sox leading at four to one. Gene Nelson.
Jose Canseco, two of his own. Reggie Jackson took one the distance. And Steve Onaveros allowed but two base runners in nine innings of work. Bring up Municipal Stadium. After an earlier double, McGuire is going to ride the knuckleballer Tom Candiotti to left center field. Number 26 later is followed by number 27. McGuire had four hits, four runs scored. He tied with George Bell for the Major League home run lead. Three nothing A's in the seventh when Jackson goes to right field. His tenth of the year, number 558 all time. Candiotti gives way in favor of Doug James. Uh, James, no luck either. Canseco ripped this three-run job. Canseco a home run in the ninth as well. But first, uh, take a look at the glove work by Jose Jer. Watch this. Oh, hey, Jose, a little right. slip and slide number. Steve Onaveros, all the way. The Indian fans can't bear to watch. A two-hitter for Steve Onaveros. He's grown a slight beard. And sit down, Brett Butler. The Royals paid for this, and McGuire hits a high, towering drive to left center. Wilson going back to the fence. And it's off the wall. It will score two runs. McGuire on his way to third as the ball comes all the way back to the shortstop, Salazar. A high, towering triple for Mark McGuire drives in two, and the A's lead three to nothing. You heard Jay Howell talk about the A's other selection for the All-Star team, and here he is, Mark McGuire. Mark, congratulations. You've got to be awfully excited about this. Very much so. Uh, what can I say? You know, a rookie season breaking in this year. Uh, not being on the ballot, and then uh, 95,000 write-in votes, and then the American League and the manager, John McNamara, and his coaches voted me in, uh, asked me to play here in Oakland. I mean, it's just awesome. I think this has kind of been a whirlwind year for you, hasn't it? If you think back to spring training, I remember we talked, and you weren't sure you were going to make this club. Now you've got 33 home runs, and you're on the All-Star team. That's, that's got to be something that's almost mind-boggling. Well, it is. And then again, it's unexplainable. Uh, you know, to go back to spring training, not knowing how I'm going to be on the club. And then if I do make the club, I'm be back and forth, uh, you know, switching off, getting my feet wet this year. And all of a sudden, I got to play on an everyday basis. I really think and I truly believe that is probably the biggest reason why I'm playing uh, so well is because I'm playing every day. That's all I've been doing my whole life is playing every day. And I'm, I know what I'm capable of doing uh, and I just go out and play every day. Have you thought at all what it's going to be like to step in here Monday and then in the cage on Tuesday and see all those people that are going to all be lined up there and realize, hey, I'm a part of this. Awesome. Uh, that's all I can say. Awesome. Uh, yesterday when I made a curtain call, uh, that was even more awesome, but I think uh, here in front of 50,000 fans or more, then you got uh, millions watching on TV worldwide. Uh, it's really going to hit me. How are you holding up uh, in all the pressure? I know that everybody wants to talk to Mark McGuire as you continue to hit the ball out of the park. Uh, how are you dealing with all that? I know there's a lot of people that want to talk to you out here today. Well, I deal with the best of my abilities. Uh, everybody knows there's a time, time schedule, uh, and I try to accompany everybody as nice as I can. Uh, but then again, I got to go out and do my job. So I think that's the first priority, is just concentrate on my job. All right, I think you know that uh, you're a pleasure for a lot of people to watch. Uh, very deserving uh, uh, naming to the All-Star team. Congratulations, and keep up the good work. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, Mark McGuire, let's go back now to Ted Robinson. I don't think it's possible for anyone to really understand what Mark McGuire is going through, or really for Mark McGuire to understand what he's going through, Joe. Here's a young man that on opening night was sitting on the bench. Wasn't really considered to be that outstanding an all-star potential. Not even on the all-star ballot at the beginning of the year. And here we are in the space of 12 weeks. He's thrust himself into Ruthie and company. It's, it's inconceivable. It really is. And then I think to get the recognition nationally that he's getting. He was on a, uh, he was a writing on, on a very good number. You heard him mention the number of ballots. So it's not a, a, a performance that's that's being gone unnoticed in terms of the rest of the nation. All you have to do is look out here every time he travels to one of the various ballparks, the herds of media that follow him around, and then once again uh, today as he was getting all kinds of attention around the batting cage, and that will only increase if those numbers continue to be uh, escalating the way they are and those home run totals go on, and we've talked about it before, this is not the time of the year to be talking about comparisons to Ruth and Maris, but if he continues on this pace, there's no way to avoid that. From the Oakland A's, number 25, Mark McGuire.
number 50, Jay Howell. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner Here are the changes defensively. We'll get how they're hitting in a moment. Mark McGuire is now at first base for Don Mattingly. Tony Fernandez is at shortstop for Cal Ripken. Kevin Seitzer is at third base for Wade Bond. Kirby Puckett is in center field. And Mark Langston on the mound. Saberhagen, Morris, and now Langston. Yes, it is indeed Mark McGuire country. We have to find out just where he belongs in the lineup. But come to think of it, if you ask him, where does a guy like that 6-5 hit? Anywhere he likes. Anywhere the big dog wants to leave. You betcha. Langston is a power pitcher, fastball strike. To let him go as we look at the man in the arm, McGuire. The blueprint was to let him play, but in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, is to start eating up an awful lot of right hand. And now, look out! Here comes the big red, Mark McGuire. a real hero on that one swing. He really has good mechanics of hitting. When he, you, you look at his stance, he turns that toe in to remind himself to keep that front shoulder in. Both eyes looking at that picture in a short, compact swing. 0-1, oh the count to Mark McGuire. And he lifts a fly ball to deep right field, racing over his Dale Murphy in the corner to make the catch. Tough play, just coming in, fighting the sun, an unfamiliar ballpark, and Murph makes the play, and McGuire comes up a buck short. And at the end of seven, no score. Mark McGuire's father is a dentist. Pitchers look at him like a root canal, and here's why. He's got that short, compact swing, and he just goes with that pitch. Murphy makes a good play. Getting back to McGuire, LaRusse's manager compares his swing to that of Bull Luzinski, compact with good power, and he can go the opposite field, as he showed right there. It looked like that was going to be a great story. Oh, and how. He's hometown hero, Mark McGuire. The contest isn't over yet, because Mark comes into the All-Star break, leading the major leagues with 33 homers. Sparking speculation about his chances to surpass Roger Maris's single season mark of 61. But what impresses everybody at this All Star event is not only McGuire's power, but how well he's been able to handle a pressure packed situation. Well, you have to have fun. This game could drive you crazy, you know? So uh, I, I just I keep a good attitude towards it, I keep a funny attitude towards it. It's part of the game, you have to deal with it, so let's just have fun. Well, fun for everyone here today would be a McGuire home run. And he proceeds to give them just that. But on this day, Mark and the rest of his American League slugging teammates come up just a little bit short. And that's up an awful lot of right hand. And now, look out. Here comes the big red, Mark McGuire. So with two out in the seventh, it's time for Mark McGuire's first all-star at bat, and Mark almost becomes a hero right away. Line drive foul. The hero was almost a real hero on that one swing. He really has good mechanics of hitting. You look at his stance, he turns that toe in to remind himself to keep that front shoulder in. Both eyes looking at that pitcher in a short, compact swing. And he lifts a fly ball to deep right field, racing over his Dale Murphy in the corner to make the catch. Tough play, just coming in, fighting the sun, an unfamiliar ballpark. And Murph makes the play, and McGuire comes up a buck short. Yeah, 
everything is a final tonight in the American League except for the Indians Orioles game Baltimore bat now in the bottom of the ninth inning well that's a final pitch on the way to McGuire swung on well hit ball center field back she goes and this one is gone McGuire has just tied the major league rookie home run record with a line shot home run over the wall in left center field here in the kingdom that's number 38 for Mark McGuire to tie the major league rookie record for most home runs by a rookie in the major leagues Wally Berger had 38 back in 1950 Frank Robinson two big outs for that man and now he deals with McGuire Slide to center, then jumped on a breaking ball and doubled into the left field seat to the fourth or the fifth inning. And that one may be it. Way back, and there's your record. Mark McGuire puts the A's in front with his major league rookie record 39th home run. And the way he's done so many this year, Lon, first pitch. Well, and it's interesting, too, that they had called him Marco Solo because of the base empty home run, but he hit the two-run shot here for the record. Sutton didn't watch Steinbox. He watched that one. And we'll watch it. Well, I think that's going to be a little load off his mind. I think it yes. had gotten to Mark a little bit in the last week. A pitching or batting coach Bob Watson over to shake hands because Bob has really been working with Mark in this, this uh, in this time, and working on him to say just go ahead and swing the way you were you were doing before. And they're they're trying to get the baseball back for or they're going to trade baseballs with <laughs> <laughs> that old hey fellas it isn't going to be that easy a trade I guarantee you that I would have thought there would have been some ushers over there trying to do that but that's what's going on right now as there's also being a pitching change made we're all getting caught up in McGuire's home run but the Angels have made a pitching change as Marcel Latchman the coach has called for left-hander Chuck Finley to replace Don Sutton. So while all of that happens, Mark McGuire has set a Major League rookie record with his 39th homer, and that gives the A's a 5-3 lead. We'll be back in a moment. The youngster right behind, he's being blocked right now by that usher. There's a young man, there he is, holding up the ball. That's the ball that the A's want, that Cooperstown wants. But right now, it's Monty Hall, they need Monty Hall down there to try and get the kid to take door number three. Well, there's an interesting thing, a curtain call on a visiting ballpark. <laughs> wow. They uh, wanted McGuire to come out. And McGuire just took a curtain call in the visiting park. That is something. <laughs> it's pretty harsh. Two and two. Yeah, there's he, the he, kid, they're going to give him a... He wants to go with you and your limo to the ball game tomorrow. Well, the A's lead 5-3 to three on Mark McGuire's 39th homer, a record by a major league rookie. And here is the A's bullpen, the relief core at its best. That, is that a two-for-one deal? Kids got to wear a funny-looking outfit to be on that program, doesn't he? You know what I can't believe, given today's climb, is that the young man didn't have an agent. Try to negotiate that deal for him. Get a couple of bats. Maybe he did. Maybe he just had a poor age. <laughs> they might have told him they were going to give him something else, too, and to come down after the game or whatever. And, and they might have told him you'd get thrown out of the game, too. <laughs> well, now the A's have a lead, and here is a curtain call in a visiting ballpark. Hi, I'm Mark McGuire. In 1987, I hit 49 home runs to break the American League rookie record. And that one may be it, way back, and there's your record. Mark McGuire puts the A's in front 
with his major league rookie record 39th home run. I don't know what my limits are. You know, I hit 49 and I drove in 118 my first year. The 1987 edition of the Oakland Athletics featured a hulking but quiet and humble rookie first baseman named Mark McGuire. When he stepped to the plate for the first time in the majors, no one could have foreseen the magnificent first chapter of a storied career that was about to be written. The power came on early in 1987 and went nuclear by the time summer approached. On a Saturday afternoon in June, McGuire made the Cleveland Indians believe from the first mighty swing of the day as he hit a monstrous two-run home run in the first inning. In the fifth, it was a solo shot followed by another two-run blast in the ninth for the ultimate power trifecta. And that one may be it, way back, and there's your record. By the time the final chapter of McGuire's sensational freshman year had been written, the numbers were historic. 49 home runs, a record for rookie round trippers. 118 runs batted in, a 289 batting average an all-star appearance, and the American League Rookie of the Year award. For the East Bay's Paul Bunyan, it was the beginning of an unprecedented era of power for A's fans. It was a memory and a season that will live on forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball.